Hey everybody, and welcome back to Fellsburn. We are here in another day, and uh, we are, well, yep, once again, doing another contract. Trying to pad our coffers a little bit. Sitting at $154,000, so we've got a little bit of uh, income. Did a uh, another planting, or sowing mission, yesterday evening, before we had turned in for the night. And uh, we're here doing this sewing mission. We actually uh, did a sewing mission on field 13, which is just just below this field. As you recall, when we last were together, we were talking about um, if we were to buy everything we were going to need going forward, we'd need about another $200,000. And then I thought, well, what if we actually leased some of this stuff? So while we're kind of running this mission here, I thought we'd kind of take a look at that. So if we, uh, we talked about needing, um, talked about a chicken, or no, we talked about horses. Can't really lease a uh, placeable. Can lease, for example, animal trailer. And that's $95 a day, $475 per operating hour. Well, how often are we going to be actually hooked up and using the water trailer? Pretty, pretty minimal. And to that extent, uh, we'll probably be, be able to uh, just lease that and 95 bucks a day. That's our commitment after the, uh, the initial lease. That is a heck of a lot uh, better than uh, than buying it outright but really our our real commitment to that water trailer is just going to be the uh, the upfront first day lease price which was uh, what was it seven hundred some dollars seven hundred and sixty dollars and we're also going to need um, mower talked about this side mower it's 160 dollars a day 800 dollars an hour initial cost is 1280 dollars so that's a lot cheaper than sixteen thousand dollars now we're going to use the mower probably a little bit more frequently than the uh water trailer but i don't see why we couldn't just lease it and and trade it in when we are in a financial position that we could buy that same would go for the uh, forage wagon a tether wind rower I have to look at those here once we do our turn back around 90 degrees good enough so let's take a look so you know our loading wagon is $460 a day $2,300 an hour so it's a little bit more expensive per hour but again how much are we going to be using this we're going to load it up with with uh, straw we're going to dump it in the um, silo we're going to load it up with hay we're going to dump it in the silo look at our tether $110 a day $550 an hour. Wind rower. $500 an hour. $100 a day. $800 to lease. So, you know, we could get probably through with our hay and straw collecting equipment for, you know, pretty, pretty cheap, pretty good rate per day, you know, beyond our initial lease a day. Again, you know, once we get into a position where we are uh, are ready to be able to buy it, we can go ahead and buy it. What else do we need? We need a harvester, right? Well, a harvester is a bit more, you know. Go with the uh, New Holland. It's uh, $2,500 at least. 
1600 hours per hour got such a small field it's not going to take long to harvest that field again this is eight thousand hours lease a thousand a day five thousand per hour i'm thinking what we're going to do is we're going to lease all the equipment we need going forward and then as we earn some money we will uh, slowly um, turn things in that we're leasing and basically buy them up front buy them outright that way we will be uh, a little bit more profitable be able to be well down our road of training our horses and it won't take but you know flipping the horses a few times to uh, to probably be able to afford a lot of the stuff that we've got leased um, it's a lot faster than than waiting until we've got you know an additional two hundred thousand dollars that's that's for darn sure but we to make that work we do need at least uh, the money for the placeable uh, hayloft and the placeable um, horse paddock look at those horse paddock is fifty thousand dollars and the placeable hayloft is ninety thousand dollars so that's one hundred and forty thousand dollars right there we've got that we've got that right now so we could go ahead and and get going with this uh, anytime we wanted wouldn't leave us too much of a reserve it would only leave us fourteen thousand dollars of a reserve to uh, lease the stuff up you would have to buy two horses, so that only leaves us four thousand dollars actually to lease things up. So we're not quite, quite at a point where we can do that. We're getting there. Be able to lease the the hay making equipment right away. Um, mow up the grass that's around the uh, the farm, and put a hayloft in put that in there I think we'll be in a position to do that fairly fairly quickly 98% waiting on it to uh, say we're complete so we can pack up the uh, pack up the cedar and move on Order up. Head back to the store. Oh. Dude, I was sitting here waiting on you. Days. Today's traffic is nightmare. Remember when traffic wasn't so hard? Bad on you. Come down here and we'll just check out our field. Looks like our canola is up. Very good. What we're going to do is we're going to bring this back to the uh, shop. <laughs> Taking out road signs left and right. We're going to take this back to the shop. We're going to unload the pallet in the uh, the cell trigger. Sell that pallet back. Then we're going to uh, collect on the, uh, the contract. Pallet off. Shut that down.
complete. Mouse has decided. Plow field. Fourteen. I don't want to do that either. We got some fertilizing. Got some. We got a fertilizer. Seventeen. Where is that one at? Oh, it's right up there from the farm. Let's do that one. And while we're up there, we'll take a look at our grass. Back here. Let's take a look and see. Our grass has uh, grown back where we were driving over it. Uh, not quite, but uh, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and uh, fertilize this field. And then we're going to go and uh, lease up that mowing equipment. Put down that hayloft. And you just get a little bit of hay going. Get a little bit of a stockpile of hay. Let's see. Let's climb. Let's see if this is enough fertilizer for that field up there. Built 17, which is in here anyway. A potato harvest at some point. So I think I may be uh, shying away from potato harvest. That one I did, which took nearly three hours, was uh, a bit much and quite frankly didn't really pay out that good. I had a pretty decent sugar beet um, harvest contract. That one took about an hour to do and uh, it paid out a lot better. In fact, speaking of sugar beets, we still have that, uh, still have all those sugar beets in our, uh, we're in the train. Let's see. Let's see what the uh, sugar beet price is today. Abysmal. It's, uh, hold on to them. A little while longer. I don't know what you guys think, but I think the morning sun is just a bit overwhelming. I get that it's bright um, as compared to, you know, nighttime, but morning is not not brighter than, than midday, but it sure does seem like, uh, sure does seem like it is. It's just so oversaturated over in that general vicinity. This won't take too long. We're still working on that uh, fertilizer that we bought the very first uh, when we bought this spreader. Fertilized our field. Fertilized a whole heck of a lot of the valley here. Using this uh, fertilizer that we spent quite a while ago. So it's definitely uh, definitely paid for itself in revenue earned. Feeding contracts. They don't. They don't pay out that much, and it turns out that we may have uh, discovered a bug in uh, in the contract system. I was I was over at FSUK, and I saw Ratkin is the uh, Giants developer that wrote uh, contract system 19. 
He's also very well known as the uh, lead programmer for uh, Seasons 17. And I mentioned that weeding contracts were rather not that uh, interesting. Because if you had to lease a weeder, uh, it basically came out to be a null, you know, null contract. Didn't earn a thing because the lease price and the reward were identical. And apparently he came back and uh, seemed to indicate that that was not the uh, desired result. And uh, that that may have been a little bug. And that might be changing in the future. That'll be interesting to see an update when that changes. What the uh, lease lease percentage is based on the revenue. In that same thread, I learned that uh, basically contracts are set up in such a way that it is uh, basically factoring in 95% completion. Once we've fertilized 95% of the field, it will say that we contract has been completed. And just like that, we've sell some more dollar. All right, let's go drop this off and head down to the shop. And we're going to um, we're going to lease a mower, lease a tether, lease a wind rower, and we're going to lease a forge wagon. Uh, we're also going to place our hayloft. Place the hayloft first. We go down there. Let's see, I've been checking out some mods recently, and uh, really tell the folks that have figured out the material system um, in 19 because their mods are really low in file size and look absolutely stunning. Probably F1 menu. Go and drop something down. Off to get quite nice like All right, let's go ahead and put that down. Figured we were gonna be pretty good with the terraforming because it was only $20 more price of the hayloft itself. That'll work. Well, I hope it'll work. We done put it down. All right, so let's head on down to the uh, to shop now and get our hay making stuff and see how much uh, hay we can get made for here in the little bit of grass area that we actually do have on our land. So I'm thinking about maybe put, oops, maybe putting that, uh, that placeable horse paddock down after we mow this or maybe going through another uh, grass cycle uh, and getting a, a second cut off of that uh, before we put it down not sure I'll have to I guess see how we fare as far as uh, as far as the grass is concerned all right let's go ahead and Head on over here to the shop. And let's see here. 
need a mower. So <clears throat> I know we talked about the side mower. Let's see here, what is that? 1280, 160, and 800. Ninety. See, I can, <clears throat> I can mow and Ted at the same rate, so I can, uh, I can do it quicker. This. So let's, let's lease this, and let's go to headers. Little tether. Wind rower. that and then the loading wagon this over to that all right now that we've got some debt to uh, to work through daily charges won't be that bad. We're not going to be running this stuff that often. Right, let's go ahead and get back to the farm and start making some hay. See how uh, how much we get here. And we'll have to see where we, uh, where our land, where our property boundaries are. Okay. Property boundaries basically from the edge of the field straight back and straight up. Okay. From the area that we have, uh, let's, let's try it here. Hold that down. Look at the uh, different color of metal there. Be careful. Don't mow our uh, canola. Probably won't cut at this stage, but uh, did have an interesting. Well, we discovered interestingly enough in multiplayer server that uh, that if you mow your grain crop. Like your straw, not your straw, but your wheat, barley, or oat, uh, that you get, um, you get straw. So you can mow your your grain crops and and get straw now. You don't have to harvest them. If all you're really concerned about is the straw. That seems pretty pretty interesting. Definitely getting less here where we were turning around a lot. Okay, we've got, we've got some grass up there that we can also get. Of course, once we put that horse paddock down, we won't have any grass up here. That horse paddock is going to take pretty much all of this area. It would be nice if these weeds would mow.
they were just configured to uh, you know, grow back. That would be pretty sweet. I don't think my mouse likes the batteries it has in it because it's been been a little problematic problematic as of late. I've been wanting to uh, respond all the time. I don't even know how much uh, how much of this grass we're going to need for our horses. I don't have a good sense as to how much um, hay a single horse needs. Didn't uh, I didn't pay overly attention when I did the uh, horse how-to video as to exactly how much food was needed by the uh, by the horses. So in the end, I guess we're just going to buy them and uh, try to get them up to 100% on their feed troughs and see what we got left. I was seeing an interesting strategy by some YouTubers uh, to buy a field. Of course, you had to have a lot of capital to do this. But to buy a field and then basically either harvest the field or mow the field, the area around the field, and then sell the field back. Damaged grass doesn't seem to be getting mowed. Clearly, we have very short grass here. Then, over here, where we've driven on it, we don't seem to be able to mow it. I would have expected it to give me a lower yield, not so much basically not change you know, appearance. Cut these off. Up this way. Straight back. Drive around here a little bit. Cool if we could cut these bushes down. We could always come through here and I guess uh, plow this up to either one, extend the field out 
or put grass over here. Eighteen looks like it's a pretty good, pretty good spot for more grass. As as the uh, fields, like we talked yes, the last uh, video, field across the street there. Looks like it's a pretty good candidate to uh, to buy for the purpose of its uh, grasslands. A little bit more. Tell you one thing I, I will and do miss about seasons was the uh, the fact that any any grass or hay that was or even straw, any of the stuff that was left on the field um, after after a harvest of uh, grass or baling of the straw uh, vanished by the time you uh, came back out here to the field. As I noticed that when I was doing some contract work on a field that we had previously um, done a harvest contract on and there was some straw on the fringes of the field just sitting there from last time that we worked it. Well, that does that just about does all of the hay run down this route going to let us mow all this and ted it. We will uh, mow it and ted it. Now, what I want to do is disconnect this because it only rings up time when connected. Go get our windrower and our forge wagon. Won't be able to windrow and um, pick up at the same time. So we don't have a, a front mounted windrower, although I have seen mods for those in, uh, in 17. need to do is just to get it back to the farm see if we can't hook this up to the front just for the purpose of getting it back
again. It's real handy that this is so close, that our uh, our chosen starting point is so close to the store. And windrow this. And we'll see if we can't turn around and windrow it the other way. Worst case scenario would be that we are inadvertently windrowing it over on the other uh, property. That wouldn't be overly, overly joyful. Alright guys, we're just going to go ahead and finish windrowing this. Skipping some. Not like uh, uneven terrain. We're going to go ahead and do our best job and windrow as much of this as we can. Then we'll be back once we're ready to start picking it up. Alright guys, well we got the... Uh, well, we got the hay raked up about as best as we could. Um, I've been seeing a modded rake uh, going around the uh, mod sites. It's basically a mod of that rake that I had, or have. And basically it was saying that the, uh, the mod basically had modified the pickup and the working area. And, well, I can see why. Uh, because that rake does not pick up very well. It's kind of, maybe maybe you could say it's a bit realistic with respect to uh, the cheap rake does kind of the job, but doesn't necessarily do the best of a job. I mean, I raked all of this. See all of the stuff that it basically missed. I raked this, this big windrow together here, basically raking everything that's up to the uh, gravel and down. And uh, yet there's still splotches and patches uh, that got missed. So I might be downloading that modded variant of that rake here soon. It's over at modhoster.com. Probably not going to do a mod video on it just because, well, I don't think a mod that fixes in-game equipment should really be uh, should really be needed. At any rate, we're getting a decent amount of hay off of this pickup. I don't think we're going to get a full load, but uh, we're doing a pretty good job. It'll take me a little while of just driving around trying to pick up the most of the scraggly bits. So we've already gotten the back picked up for the most part. If anything back there, it's just going to be random little patches. But I really do, am curious about all of this grass that appears to be like in a in a first growth stage uh, that was not mowable, and it's almost like uh, you know if we probably took a a mower to our oats, we wouldn't get anything uh, because it's in its first growth stage. 
but we were able to basically mow things that weren't um, in a uh, crop destruction state. Seems a little weird. Hopefully this grass will rebound. And next time we cut it, we'll be able to mow it all thoroughly. Well, probably won't be mowing it again because we're going to be putting our horse pen down. At any rate, whatever we do end up mowing, hopefully it won't uh, it won't be permanently affected by uh, us running over it when we're working on that field. So guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please go ahead and click that like button. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe. I mean, let's play videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here on Felsburn. We've got mod reviews coming out and uh, how-to videos. How-to videos are kind of in the queue. Come up every so often. There's only so many that you can, you know, obviously keep pounding out. But at any rate... Until next time, guys, happy farming.